Let's talk about some of the main packages and tools that you can use to work with simple features. The main package that you want to use to handle simple features these days is the SF package. And it's an R package specifically designed to work with simple features, which I will call SF objects because that is the class of object that the SF package generally creates. And it's useful for working with simple features, both in terms of the geometry objects and the associated attributes. And the SF package can import simple feature objects, it can manipulate those objects, and it can plot the SF objects. And the SF package is a newer package intended to supersede the SP package, which is another spatial data analysis package available in R. This is the package that I learned to do spatial data analysis in. It's a really a fantastic package. It does a ton of stuff, uh, but the, the design, the structure of the software wasn't as efficient for connecting with uh, external packages that are more commonly used in the GIS community to do calculations and computations and transformations and things like that. So the FF pa SF package was created to better link with the, the, I guess, the industry used software, as well as to specifically be compatible with tidy data, which is something we've talked about in this course quite a bit. And so while the SP package is a fantastic package, in general, I wouldn't recommend using it moving forward if you have the choice. I know I have a lot of legacy code that uses the SP package. It's probably going to work for many, many years, but eventually the SP package is just going to really fall behind the SF package, I think, because the SF package is intended to be designed and work with newer approaches for working with spatial data. Because of how the SF objects are represented in R through the SF package, then the simple features, once they are constructed or imported, can be manipulated and plotted using many other well-known packages, such as dplyr. So the SF objects are intended to be tidy data, set, tidy data sets that are easy to work with with dplyr. And there is a nice geom, geom underscore SF, provided by the ggplot2 package that can be used to easily plot SF objects much of the time. There is also a base plotting capabilities in the SF package, but if you're familiar with the tidyverse, you like working in the tidyverse, then the ggplot2 package can easily work with SF objects. Something else I wanna at least briefly mention, even though it's not technically directly related to simple features or working with spatial data, is color palettes. And so when you're trying to display the behavior or the distribution of some variable over geographic space, it often becomes really critical to choose a good color palette to display the different levels of that variable. And there's actually a number of different palettes that are available in base R through the GR devices package. And the traditional palettes, the traditional palettes that most people know about are the rainbow palette, the heat.colors palette, terrain.colors, topo.colors, cm.colors. These are pretty well-known color palettes. But as of R 4.0.0, the hcl.colors palette function was also added to the graphics device, uh, the GR devices package. And this is has a much broader range of color palettes that you can use to visualize data, to visualize variables, and it's really powerful. And at the end of this tutorial, actually, I have uh, shown, I've created, I've run some code that's actually available just in the help file for the hcl.colors function, which shows you the different color scale or the, the color swatches of the different color palettes that are available there. Um, so look at so we'll look at the end of the this tutorial in just a second. And then another package that you may want to know about is the color space package, which is actually closely linked with this hcl.colors palette function for what I can tell. And so color space is another package, an external package that's intended to provide useful color palettes um, for use by R. One of the nice things about color space is it doesn't just provide some of the base functions like hcl.colors, it also provides those same color palettes in a style that is compatible with ggplot2. And so if you like some of these those color scales, then it's helpful to install those this package so that you can use them more easily in ggplot2. And also, because hcl.colors wasn't available before R4.0.0, if you have an older version of R, which is gonna get less and less common moving forward, uh, you can use the color space package to get many of the same color palettes in older versions of R. And so I know I updated some of my packages, my R packages, to use this package for backwards compatibility to make sure that older people using older versions of the software would still be able to 
uh, use the color palettes that were available in more modern versions of R. So because we're going to be using so many of these packages, I want to load most of them. So I'm going to load the SF package, the dplyr package, the ggplot2 package. I'm not going to load the color space package, however, because when I was running uh, this code, if I loaded the color space package first, I started getting some errors because it has a chords function that is related to the SF package. And so essentially the chords function from the color space package is overriding the chords function from the SF package, which is kind of a big deal. And so we're not going to load the color space package, uh, but when we need to access color palettes from that package, we'll just call it directly using the colon colon approach to access a specific function from a specific package. So I'm just going to drop to the bottom of this uh, tutorial here so you can see all those different color scales I was mentioning. mentioning. Uh, and so here are some color palettes available with base R. And so you can see the cm.colors color scale, the topo.color scale, terrain.colors, heat.colors, rainbow. And these are pretty popularly used, especially in older examples, because these were color palettes that were available at the time. I particularly do not like cm.colors personally. It makes my eyes bleed, so I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, topo.colors doesn't have a nice gradient in quite the same way, so I don't like that one very well either. The terrain.colors is not so bad, uh, and so it goes from green more toward brown up to white. And I think the idea is that like as you get closer to the sun, things tend to get browner and less colorful because they're getting blasted by the sun. Uh, heat dot colors, we start with red, we move up into orange and yellow, then into white, just because as things get hotter and hotter, they might start red and they get even more orange and then, you know, blazing yellow and then blazing hot white. Rainbow, I also don't like this color scale very well, simply because I, I, mean, I can interpret this scale, but there's no sensible pattern to it, at least in my opinion. Uh, that's going to be useful for, that's going to enhance visualization. Here are some other, uh, some of the palettes that are available in the hcl.colors palette here. Uh, you know, if you like these, these are great. I don't think there's anything particularly uh, fantastic about any of these. Um, you can see some colors like grays, light grays. This can be useful for creating black and white graphics. If you want to stick with a single color, you can have, for example, blues and reds. Uh, and then it starts branching out into using more colors. The colors I do really like, however, though, are uh, these three color palettes, the Viridis color palette, the Plasma color palette, and the Inferno palette. And these are really specifically designed to enhance readability for people who are colorblind and who, uh, and also to be able to uh, display them in black and white without issue. And so I think the Viridis for sure, and I think it's Plasma. I can't remember if it's true of Inferno because that's, even though that's very similar, the Viridis color scale specifically is intended to be able to be viewed by people with colorblindness successfully or some kinds of colorblindness. And then also if you plot, if you print a, a, a plot constructed using Viridis, the Viridis scale, it's actually going to be readable in black and white as well, even though it's not going to be as colorful, it's still, it's still readable. So it's very nice for people who might be printing this out on a non-color printer. So I really like the Viridis color scale. The plasma color scale, I believe, has similar properties using a different color scheme, but it's also pretty nice. And then you can see that there's another, uh, many other uh, different color scales uh, that you can use. If you're displaying qualitative data or something like that, maybe some of these are more useful. But for, se for sequential color scales, uh, for showing the different levels, like in ascending order of a, of a variable, I really like the Viridis. This is the one that you can see almost all the packages these days seem to be adopting this for displaying graphics. There is another version of the Viridis color scale called Kividis, which is corrected Viridis. It's actually not available in, actually it is available in hdl.colors. If we go down to the bottom. So here is Kividis uh, and it's intended to correct some of the deficiencies of the Viridis color scale. I don't think it's quite as pretty, but technically for people struggling with color blindness, it's supposed to be improvement. Uh, so you might consider this as a color scale as well. Uh, but this particular scale is not available in the color space package, at least not yet. So maybe that will change in the future. But if you wanted to use the color space package, then Kividis is not available. Though there is a Viridis light package, which I only mentioned in passing, which does have uh, Kividis and Viridis and some of the other color scales that I've uh, talked about really liking. And, it, and you can easily access those color palettes in base R or using ggplot2. And so you might consider those if you really want to improve the color scales or color palettes of your graphics.